All right, we're back for another portfolio review. This one's for Jessica. Very first thing, let's dive into the network tab. I wonder if people care about this vid this part of the video or they just skip it. Uh, I don't care, it matters. So we're gonna do a hard refresh. I just wanna take a look at some of the response times and the size of things. Navbar JS. Very small. 700, why is... Okay, that's probably a portfolio project. Uh, this is a really small image. Is this, does this really need to be this big? Did you run this through like a tiny, what is this? Uh, oh my God, I lost it already. Um, did you run this through like TinyPNG, a website that'll just optimize an image for you? I, I feel like you probably could. This I, this feels large. Uh, good response time. Pretty good response time. All right, let's run through it. Jessica Chambers, resume, portfolio, contact. Um, you're most likely not going to need this. We're not going to dive into this, uh, but... Well, I guess we are. It's on your website, so. Uh, Front-end developer. <laughs> I like this image. This is neat. Um, I like little robots, though, so it's, I'm, I'm biased. Um, but but why? Like, what are you emphasizing here? I'm a front-end developer looking to enhance my skills and knowledge. Self-taught developer using the internet, free code camp, and other resources for learning. Okay, you're, you're, you're labeling yourself as a student. Uh, you're not labeling yourself as a hireable developer. So you're self-taught. That, I like this. I like this. I don't care that you use the internet. I, like pretty much all developers do, right? This is irrelevant. Free code camp. Uh, sounds like a cheap service that you used. I, don't, I wouldn't even include that. I, well, so here's the thing. Um, if, if other developers at your company or you're like a hiring manager or someone, whoever's looking at this, they know about Free Code Camp and they've hired developers that have learned from it, you have a really good, uh, you, you can kind of create a little bit of a connection there, a little bit of trust because they're like, oh, oh, Free Code Camp. I heard that was pretty good. You know, we've had good experience uh, with developers that have. So you have a chance of creating that trust early. Uh, Okay, maybe I'm just talking through this. Maybe maybe that's fine. Um, and other resources for learning. I just, like, wh why are you emphasizing these? Are these really important? You're a self-taught developer. That is, that is strong. Um, and in fact, like, when you, when you don't have, like, a traditional CS degree and people to hold your hand, and it, like, it shows a lot of initiative and... That is a very strong trait to show as a developer when you're trying to get hired. Uh, so self-taught is very, I like putting self-taught if you are self-taught. But um, you emphasize that you're a front-end developer, you're looking to enhance my skills, and you're not looking to enhance your, of course you are, that's a given. Um, and that's gonna shine through with your personality in the interviews, uh, hopefully. Uh, but you're looking to provide value. You're looking to build things to, uh, I don't know, in improve businesses that you're passionate about. And you're, you know, you're going to bring your expertise to do that on the technical side. Like you, you're, you're here to provide value. You're not here to showcase that you're a student and you're always learning. Um, I think. I think it's fine to say that you're always eager to learn. I think that's healthy, but you're missing telling your audience that you're providing them value in some way. You're you're going to provide them value. So you need to talk like like you are a developer because you are, right? You you are a developer, you have experience. If you have a portfolio, you have experience. So you need to kind of showcase that a little bit more. I don't I don't think it's so much of, of confidence as it is of well, it's a little bit of confidence, but it's, it's just showing that you can provide value for that employer, and you haven't done that yet. Um, so I, I really, I really hammered this down because this, this is one of your initial sentences. This is important. Um, 
Okay, layouts. Contrast is pretty poor against this. This is a very crisp image. Um, I would actually darken this, fade, I don't know about fading it. Uh, maybe darken it a little bit more, but this is this is hard to read. I, why does this image stop here? Is this, do you just kind of have a smaller source image? Is that what it is? Um, this looks weird how it stops here. Extend it if you can. Um, and what you can do, if, like if the image is too small, you can kind of have like a background for your containing element and then this image goes over it. And it looks like, like it kind of fades to black. So maybe you have a, ba a black background here. That could work. Education, uh, less relevant than your portfolio. Uh, skills, what? Okay. Um, God. The number of conversations I've had over like, okay, so you're basically, I think you're trying to create labels or the appearance of a label. This kind of looks like a button though. Like labels and buttons can be very weird and it's very easy to create a slightly jarring experience for the user when they would expect to be able to click something like this um, because this kind of looks like a button, doesn't it? Um, so here's what's happening. Uh, this is stacking. You're getting this weird alignment. I'm not against the stacking, but vertically align this um, at bare minimum. Coursera, Google IT support, professional certification, free code camp. This is so irrelevant. Well, electrical engineering is interesting. Concentration in computer engineering. This is this is pretty relevant. Eh, it's not so much. Uh, free code camp. So, so in my opinion, certifications are close to worthless. They they show a completion of something, but certifications very often aren't monitored. Um, like it's not like a traditional testing set like you don't go to a traditional testing center where they make sure you're not cheating and like there's no standards for that certification usually um just whatever the website gives but they, like it's not state like the standards aren't standardized um it, it it's just the certification means almost nothing because people don't really like unless it is a, um, you know, it's a, a standard certification that like if you're getting into DevOps, getting into backend, um, there are certain certifications and courses that you might take that can be advantageous and that are supported and understood um, and employers know about all throughout like the United States um, and different countries. And so, I, I, so what I'm trying to get at is this information is definitely not more relevant than your portfolio this is pretty relevant you're taking up a lot of space with it i don't think you need to um might even consider like uh mixing it in with your portfolio like hey these projects were built with these um i don't know at the very least i would move this section down uh emphasize your portfolio a little bit sooner view more if you have more i'd put the projects on here uh, what is this? This is a... Okay, we're going to look at it. These images look flat, or they look like they're... Like you crushed them. Does that sound weird? Like, they, they just don't look proper to scale. Um, are these images, like, were they distorted? Because you could see the text, like, it looks very flat, and I bet you your project doesn't look like that. Um, tourist attraction, JS calculator roles. Okay, so you have some simple projects. So first of all, you have experience. I really think you should sell yourself as a developer versus as a student. Um, I think you can provide some humbleness and say, eager to learn, eager to grow. That's fine. I just, we had already talked about that up here. So as far as your portfolio, um, I think the images need to be a little bit more clear. I think the way you scaled them, it, they look odd. Uh, provide some context. Uh, like there's, you know, what kind of context are you going to provide for a JS calculator? So it's, it's a bit of a weaker project um, than kind of a full-fledged website where probably provide some, like this, things to do, tourist attraction. This looks like a full website. This looks, uh, I mean, this, 
this looks like it could provide value, uh, but there's no context. Like, why did you create some of this stuff? Um, who, who are you trying to serve with this? So what I'm trying to emphasize is it's really good to talk about the value that uh, these projects that you've created have provided to other people. And if they were kind of just personal projects, I, I mean, you created them for some reason, right? You, do you have a passion? Like, do you, do you like traveling? I mean, talk about maybe like, why did you create this? Uh, were you trying to fill a gap for tourists? Like, I, I guess a little bit more context with this. So usually you'll see like a card with a little, little image, a screenshot of the website. You'll, you, can, you can name it, that's fine, but I think the context is gonna be more relevant. Then you could potentially have like the stack that you used to create this. Um, and you, like I said, you could do that if you bring that down here. Um, then a link to the live website. And I think it's fine to make this clickable. Hopefully it open, nope, that should open a new, new tab. Yeah, it does not. Okay, cool. So that should open in a new tab, but also a link to the source control. Uh, so it's probably on GitHub, right? So people are gonna, yep, it's probably on GitHub because I see a link here. So people are probably gonna wanna take a link to that and go to the GitHub. Uh, and then that's really it. I actually, I'm kind of curious. What, see, what the heck? You have a lot more pride. Bring, okay, first of all, hell yes. Bring all this on here. This homepage has no information. I mean, like, it has information, but this is more important. Bring, bring this to the homepage. This is way more relevant. Um, you have, definitely have some projects to show here. This is cool. And then you even provide, oh, this alignment looks weird. This isn't centered, is it? I don't think it is. Center these. The alignment looks weird. Um, images look flat. We talked about that. Like, see, you're doing it here. Bring that, bring that to here. And get rid of this. Um, okay, contact, subject, what is, what popped up? Here's a correct anonymous polling, cause your experience goes, I forget what I look up sometimes. Um, okay, so what, what is this? Subject, is this like message? Why did you drop the label from this all of a sudden? Um, it's probably gonna be assumed this is gonna be the message. Um, I, I think consistency is going to look a little better. It's going to feel a little better. Um, okay. I've been thinking about this. Uh, you, here's, here's your emphasis color. This is where you're catching people's attention. And I think this works. I think this green and yellow works and it has good contrast. And then you change it to blue. So it becomes a little bit more inconsistent. So now I don't really know what to look at. I don't like what's important. Like a brighter color like this is probably gonna seem more important. So this is less important, which I would actually agree. And I don't think you meant to do that though. And then you change the color again. So your headers are inconsistent with, with the colors. And sometimes that could be hard to do. I would like, I would almost just make this black. I, I think you are almost changing, you're, you're changing your header color when you don't need to. I would make this black. Um, and here I would match this. Uh, or just whatever you're doing, just be consistent. If, it, if it's gonna be light blue against this green, that's fine. But to have emphasis all up here, it almost, it's weird to say this, but it almost feels like you're telling the user to stay up here. This is the most important part of your website. This is the brightest color against, especially against this green, this is the most important part. So everything below this is gonna be a little less important. Um, Quick transitions, I like that. 
this is cool. This looks neat. Jessica Chambers. All right, so what else? Resume. Education. See, this is where you can put education. This is where this is relevant. Technical skills. This is good. I love this. Yes. You like if you have a resume section, I think that's fine. So typically like you're probably going to send this off. Why do you uh don't Hopefully you don't have a two-page resume. Um I love that you divided this into different sections here. It actually looks pretty good. This is poor contrast. Oh, you need some line height here. Um, whew, this is poor contrast. Uh, no, well, oh, oh, oh. yeah, this. Th this text is really squeezed together. You have so much text here. Um, so look into letter spacing and line height and just kind of go with what feels right. Um, why... This subheader is right of your bullet. Does that look weird? Does that feel weird? I would just stay safe and start leftmost and go a little bit right each time when you start getting a lot of the... I guess this is kind of a subheader. You know what it, you know what it is? I don't think there's a problem with putting a little like tab or space when you want to um, emphasize like the position or anything like that. You don't even have to push this over to the right so much, but I almost like, it's weird to flow from here to here to here. I think it's more natural to flow from left to right. And so if you're going to create this gap and then go back to here, what I would do is create a little bit of vertical space between this Actually, I gotta look. Yeah, you can see my mouse. Okay, thank God. I point to so many things with my mouse. I and I didn't even know if people could see it. I don't. I need to watch my videos. Um, so create a little bit more vertical space, and I think it would be fine. Um, but you need more line height and letter spacing. This this is really hard to read on with this blue. Uh, in this font, internship, Alabama. Student, okay, cool. So this is. This is where a lot of this information should be. Otherwise, this is irrelevant, in my opinion. What is this, Medium? Why is it, why are there like 30 different logos for Medium? Like I just did a video before where the Medium logo looked entirely different. So this is, um, I'm gonna give the same feedback to you as I did uh, the previous person. I'm not sure if I'm gonna release this video sooner, but here it is. These icons are meaningless. You pretty much, so what you're doing is you are assuming that the user knows all about these icons. And for the most part, they probably do, especially to, like, so you have to think about the people that are looking at this. Um, you know, like if a recruiter is looking at this or HR, they're going to know what Twitter is. They're probably not going to know what this is. They might, if they've hired a lot of developers, they're going to know what LinkedIn is. But there, there's probably icons that they're not going to recognize. And so how is that relevant to them? Um... It's, it's not, and they're not gonna, they, they might not trust you enough to care about any of this when it could be relevant information. So my, my stance is don't put it on your website if you don't think your users are going to look at it. And I think, I, I think you provided like a wide net. You, you did a very common thing where people are like, I'm just gonna toss on as much social media or external platforms as I can to try to provide more information, more relevancy, try to create more of a connection with my user, but it doesn't come off naturally. They just toss everything in the footer. And so you can do that, but you can also make it more effective by even providing a little context. Like let's say you mouse over this, maybe, maybe this is code pen or additional projects you mouse over this this is um i don't know maybe you talk about how you encourage other developers on twitter and uh um it can kind of like shine a light into your personality a bit like why would people care about any of this right um they're probably like i have a feeling that this is a website that employers are visiting once they've already looked at your resume, they already have your contact information. So why is this relevant? I think that's a good question to ask. Um, so you can, 
You decide what you want to do with this. I don't think there's a problem with doing this. I just think this is extremely ineffective and I think it could be more effective. You could put a GitHub, like uh, you're going to have live links to your GitHub projects, all the ones that you're going to be showcasing. Do you, do you really need this? Um, if you post, uh, I'm not going to take a look at this, but if you write blog post on Medium, bring that onto your portfolio. That's relevant. That that it, I don't know what kind of post you write, but that can either give a window into your personality or your development process or your growth as a developer, whatever you're talking about. Like That seems relevant. This is an, a case where it seems relevant, but this is tossed on the bottom. Like, Do you want people to care about this or not? If not, get rid of it. Um, so that's my opinion. I'm really skeptical about just tossing a bunch of links in the footer, um, especially because it also pulls attention. You created buttons out of these, pulls a little bit of attention from your portfolio somewhat. Um, so I would think about that. It's kind of an open-ended advice. Just think about that and, and see uh, if you can integrate more context into this or what you want to do with this. But I, I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong, but I think you could just make this more effective. So you have a portfolio, you have experience, you're not showing it. You have three projects with really kind of broken images. They look weird. There's no context around them, no live links for the people to explore. Uh, it doesn't tell me what value that your portfolio uh, projects have, uh, they provide, or even like what you learn from them, the stacks with them. This, this is more relevant. This needs to be on your homepage, 100%. Um, what else? Mobile. We almost forgot mobile. We can't forget mobile. One day I'm going to forget it and I'm going to be so mad at myself and I'm going to go back and have to do the whole video again. Uh, okay. Hamburger menu. This alignment's weird. Uh, vertical align. This. Align this with this. These should be vertically aligned. Again, it's a lot of the same advice applies with contrast. I would make this a little bit darker, this background image. Uh, education. Again, this becomes a hell of a lot less relevant. Alignment's weird. At least align it with like maybe this, the blue all lines here, and then the white aligns here. But these are way over here. I don't know what is causing this alignment. This might just be a CSS bug. Uh, portfolio, cool. Again, bring that portfolio, the separate page out of this. I think that is going to be incredible. Um, I would left align these on mobile. This looks weird. Left align this. Uh, does this need to be bold? Probably not, right? It's not that important. Uh, nice little smooth animation when it opens up would be nice. The alignment, the alignment looks off. Bring these to bring these to the left. It doesn't necessarily need to be aligned with this. You can like you kind of have um, this this preference where you're creating a little bit of a tab with kind of sublinks, subheaders, and I think that's fine. I think this is just, I wonder if this is just pushed over too far. Is it, are you aligning it with this? Is that what it is? I love that you left align this. This becomes a lot more readable. The contrast is still really rough, but we talked about making that image darker or doing something with that. Um, actually, I actually want to take a look at your portfolio. Man, these images are squished. Uh, again, alignment here. These look like buttons. Do these need to be buttons or labels? Like, do these need to be labels? These just look like buttons. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see. Okay. No additional feedback for that. Contact. Oh, wow, that is crunched. Uh, you don't need this much padding. Uh, okay, so you need to be careful on mobile because it, like this is what happens. You crunch a lot of the important content when you're trying to create some, like you probably just saw too much green. You wanted to create kind of like a, a card container and a little drop shadow, which I think looks pretty good. Um, but your content is king. It's more important. 
first of all, like now you're center aligning some of this one. It probably should be left aligned, just like you did. Like I think you had the right idea on the home page with that container I gave you the compliment about. Do that here. Be consistent about it. When you have a paragraph of text, it's easier to read it when it's left aligned. Um, there is like inconsistent alignment here and here. Um, left align this like there just probably doesn't even need to be that much padding you have padding and then you have more padding you have too much padding and that's what's crunching everything um send see the thing is like this brings uh, this button should have more emphasis this is your call to action than your header why isn't this blue and this yellow like, why do you choose blue for the button? I think brighter colors against this dark green are going to create more attention. And I think you have attention in the wrong places there. Um, it almost seems like because you even highlighted these inputs with yellow that this button's separate. It doesn't, does this even send this? This looks like kind of one, one unit all together and this this button just feels weird it feels off it feels siloed and doesn't really match the scheme um, hmm. all right let's go back okay summary i think you have a lot of experience and i don't think you show it i don't think you show it soon enough um i I like this color. I, like, I actually like the vibe of this. Um, I really do. It makes me feel good. Again, I'm a big fan of Little Robots, so I'm biased. But, like, I like the blue, actually. I don't know how much I like the yellow. I think the yellow is overused. I think the blue is a little bit more relevant. Um, I just thought of this, but, like, you might consider doing this as a as a blue and like this a blue and then when you hover over it it transitions into yellow uh, so you can create a little bit of a transition um that's that might be good because i actually like this blue against this green i really do but this kind of makes the website pop a little bit i don't know i i think the yellow is a little bit overused and not or it's not used in the right places but overall i like the feel of this um, I think if you have blog post, you need to bring that onto your portfolio. I think that's going to be very relevant. Um, Instagram. I don't see a lot of Instagram. Hold on. Oh, these should be opened in new tabs. It looks like it's doing a direct link. Okay. Code to edit. I don't get developer Instagrams. Like, I don't understand them. And they're, they're relevant and people love them. I just, I've, I've been thinking about, should I start an Instagram or not? And I don't, um, I don't know. I don't have the answer to that question. So I think there are weird alignment issues. I think there are weird emphasis issues, um, spacing, letter spacing and line height, especially with a resume. Your resume is going to be less important. Um, in my opinion, like you, this isn't as important as a portfolio. I would switch these. Uh, well, no, no, you shouldn't switch them because um, you're going to get rid of this and you're going to put portfolio on this, on your on the homepage. Um, it's really just a bit of CSS cleanup and image optimization and fixing some of these weird distortions that you might see um, and providing more context for the portfolio. And that's it. I feel like I feel like you're 90% of the way there. Like I picked what I picked at was you pretty much have all the content, and that's really the hardest thing. What I picked at was emphasizing the content at different points and how you would emphasize them. And I picked on like alignment issues. That's just CSS touch ups. Like I really feel like you're 90% there. And I like the vibe of this. I think it just needs some cleanup. Um, and that that's not a bad thing. So um anything else done i don't think so uh cool that's it if you like this type of video you like this style of video um uh, let me know just like the video
<laughs> that's, that lets me know. If you have any additional feedback, uh, provide it in the comments below. If you wanna see more of this, like you, you do find value in these types of videos, these pretty much raw, for the most part, unedited and unfiltered types of reviews, um, subscribe to the channel. And yeah, that's it. I know.